We have seen that the weight of a rigid object can itself produce a torque. The question is, where do we draw the weight vector in the free body diagram? If the object has geometric symmetry, like a sphere or a uniform plank, then the weight vector acts at its geometric center. But if the rigid object is asymmetrical, like a baseball bat for example, then the weight vector would be drawn at the object's center of mass, which was defined in section 7.5. For any rigid object, symmetrical or otherwise, this point where the weight of the object can be considered to produce a torque due to its weight is known as the center of gravity. We can also talk about the center of gravity of a system of objects. Consider the example of a uniform plank with a weight w1 and a mass with weight w2 that is located near its left end. The plank and weight are free to pivot about an axis located at the right end of the plank. We begin by drawing the free body diagram for the forces acting on the plank. The weight of the plank is drawn at its geometric center and the weight of the mass W2 is drawn in at the location of the mass. Each one of these weights will produce a counterclockwise torque about the axis of rotation. Thus, the net torque on the plank will be equal to W1x1 plus W2x2. However, it is possible to calculate the net torque by treating the total weight of the system, W1 plus W2, as if it were located at the system's center of gravity with a lever arm equal to X sub CG. These two expressions for the net torque must be the same. We can solve this expression for x sub cg, which locates the center of gravity of the system. Here we have derived the expression for a system of two weights, but it can be extended to account for any number of weights in the system. Once the location of the center of gravity of a system is determined, it can be balanced by placing a support beneath this location. Therefore, the center of gravity represents the location where, if an axis is placed, the net torque about that axis will be zero. The center of gravity plays an important role in determining whether a group of objects is in equilibrium. The plank and weight, for example, are in equilibrium if the axis of rotation is placed at the system's center of gravity. However, if we change the position of the weight resting on the plank, say further to the left, this will shift the position of the system's center of gravity. The net torque on the system will no longer be equal to zero, and the system will rotate. What if an object has an irregular shape and a non-uniform weight distribution? We can locate its center of gravity using the following procedure. First, suspend the object with a string, for example, from some arbitrary point P1. The object will hang in equilibrium, and its center of gravity must be located somewhere beneath the string along the line below the point of suspension. We draw a dashed line on the object beneath the string. To determine the location of the center of gravity on this line, we simply hang the object from another arbitrary point P2. The object will hang in equilibrium again, and the center of gravity must again be on a line below the point of suspension. We draw another dashed line, and the point where the two dashed lines cross must correspond to the location of the center of gravity. If we drill a hole through the center of gravity, we can place the object on an axis, and it will be in dynamic equilibrium in any orientation. One final note on the center of gravity. If we eliminate g from each weight term in the numerator and denominator in our expression for the location of the center of gravity derived earlier, the resulting equation is exactly the same as equation 7.10, which represents the location of the center of mass of a system. In fact, the location of the two points is identical. For ordinary sized objects, like cars and boats, the center of gravity and center of mass coincide.